Okay, so this video is on how to create projects in Studio Suite 12. Now, because projects are based largely on resources, there is a prerequisite for this video, uh, which is that you please watch our earlier video called How to Create Resources. It's important to know that before we can learn how to build projects. So the URL for that is here, uh, and you can also grab all of our videos here at this URL. And just a reminder that you can stop the video here if you want to go ahead and grab those URLs. Uh, so there's four ways to create projects. Uh, one is from contacts, which you might not think of as the most obvious way. Another is in projects by creating a new project. Also in projects by creating a project from a template. Uh, and also from calendar by selecting resources on a timeline. Now in Stu Suite, we say that every project can have a budget side and an actual side. And therefore, there's also a difference between the two of those. So let's take a look. Here we are in the home screen of Studio Suite. I'm going to jump right into the first one of those. We'll go to the Contacts module, uh, and let's pick our client, uh, Adam Smith. Notice he is flagged here as a client. Uh, and let's suppose that he just called up, and I want to you know, document that. So say they called and uh, interested in booking some time, blah, 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 blah. So I'll, I'll just hit Book Project, and that's going to bring us into a new project window. And then I'll call this uh, Adam Smith. Here we are in the project. So now that the project is created, uh, we can go ahead and you know specify any of the further details or uh, just start adding items. So I could click on Add Items uh, and add in whatever uh, resource I'm looking for. So it's one of my rooms. I can just click on, say, Edit To and go ahead and add that to the project. Notice I'm adding it to the actual side of the project. More on that later. So here we are in the project. So now we're in uh, the projects module. Uh, what I want to do is create another one. So just as in every module, we use the function bar here at the top of the window. So if I click the new button, I have the option to create a new project or create from template. So I'm just going to do new project. Here we are on the new project. Call it my new project. Easy enough. Uh, and again, I'm simply going to go ahead and start adding items. And I can be uh, fairly random about it. Uh, but notice that, that the items that are booked today are already uh, indicating that there is a potential conflict there. So I'm going to go ahead and book Studio C. Uh, and let's say I need some people to go along with that. So let's get uh, Andy Engineer. And I want uh, maybe a piece of equipment. Um, here's a lot of equipment. I'm looking just for cameras. Let me find those. Here's all my camera items. Let's go ahead and book uh, this item right here. Again, adding to the actual side of the project. So I'll go ahead and add those items. It's telling me I've got some conflicts. And so we'll go ahead and take a look at those. So there's everything that I just booked. Uh, what I'm going to do here uh, is flag this as a template, uh, meaning that this is, uh, let's say, perhaps a repeating structure, uh, the kind of project that we're going to book over and over again uh, for a show or something like that where they always want to work in Studio C for the shoot and then they're going to go into Edit One and whatever. So now uh, what I want to do, I'll call this my new project. I'm going to hit the new button again and I'm going to say from template. Keep in mind I've flagged only one project so far as a template which is that one we just did called my new project. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as my project. And here it's asking me to rename it. I'll call it my new project 2. And I'm going to set the start date to the following week, let's say the 30th, and then I'll hit OK. And so what it's going to do at this point is basically just duplicate that project and offset everything, uh, all of the items, uh, any had we created any tasks, uh, all the tasks would be offset uh, and so forth uh, for this new period. And here we are. Uh, we're now in the duplicate record. And here are all of those same items. We'll see that they are spread out on that uh, the following week. So the final way that we can create a project uh, is from the calendar. So let's go take a look at that. Here we are in the calendar, and we can see those items that we have just created. There they are. So let's do this. Uh, in Studio A, let's book uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, and let's have Andy Engineer uh, work on those days, and let's have Joe Producer come in on the last day. Now, um, a lot of our customers work in very narrow time frames, so let's say we want to have Studio B. Uh, this is the day view of Calendar. We're just going to um, have a quick meeting in Studio B for, say, an hour and a half right there. So now what I want to do is book a project. So, oddly enough, I hit the Book Project button. That brings up a couple options here. Just know that you can always just hit Proceed. Um, but what we can do is add these things to an existing project, if I click that. 
Uh, that'll give me a picker of existing projects to choose from. Uh, and I can also uh, determine whether or not I want to specify a client in this booking. Uh, and if I'm booking a multiple day project, do I want to book it as a continuous item, meaning that there's all one thing? I'm going to turn that off uh, in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and hit proceed. Uh, here it's asking us to choose a client. I'll choose that same client just to be consistent, Adam Smith. And here we are over in the projects uh, with the items we selected from calendar. Uh, so that's it. That's how you can create a project. I'm going to do one more though, uh, and I'm going to create a new project. And this time I'm going to, uh, we'll go ahead and pick our client. Uh, I'm going to flag this as a budget project and I'm going to deselect the actual checkbox. What I'm going to do now is navigate over to, uh, notice I was on the actual column before. I'm going to go over to the budget column. We call this the budget side of the project. Uh, and from here, I can go ahead and start adding a number of different things. Let's say we need this and this, and of course I'm just being kind of random and quick about things. Adding these things, let's go uh, look at some services. Let's add some of this and some of this and some of this. Again, being very quick and random. And I'm adding these to the budget. Notice this checkbox down here at the bottom. Yes, I want these on the budget. I may at this point also not know what day or dates I want these to be uh, booked on. So I'm going to, you know, even though it says up here September 23rd, I'm going to say add to project without dates because the client is called. They think, you know, maybe this is going to happen in the future, but they don't know when. So I'm going to do add to project without dates. So you're going to work up some numbers here. Uh, let's say that this is a uh, camera assistant is going to be, uh, I don't know, 150 for the day. Uh, and also, you know, because we didn't choose the dates here and some of these are day rates, it's calculating a zero time because there's, you know, start date and end date is zero. You can't calculate anything. So let's go ahead and put in, this is uh, maybe three days and there's going to be three days of expense on this. Uh, you get the idea, showing me my profit loss for that item. So we've got a number of things here. I'll do view totals, uh, 320 for the project. Wow, that's a big one. Uh, and so what I could do is print this out or email it and send it to the client. I'll skip that part for now. But let's say that the client approves, and what we want to do is uh, move this over to the actual. So I'm going to go look at my actual charge. I can either click here, uh, or I can look at my last three places that I've been. Actual charges, actual signs, or again, actual charges. So I'm just going to go look at my actual charges, just to show you something, that it's empty. There's nothing there. So from here, I'm going to click on the gear tool over here, and I'm going to say load all from budget. And I'm actually not going to do that now because I want to show you that if I go back to my budget charge by clicking here, uh, and by the way, I also could have clicked here to get back there, uh, the gear tool over in the budget view has a similar button that says send all to actual. It's actually the exact same button with a different label. We can either pull it from actual or push it from budget. And it says, are you sure? I want to say yes. So this is interesting. On the actual side, do you want to keep the entered budget values for quantity and multiplier or clear those to allow for new actual calculations. So again, it says clear suggested. I'll go ahead and hit clear. And what that's going to do is any time or quantity that I specified over here on the budget with no dates uh, is going to be cleared out so that when we get to the actual side, those values will be based on real time. So for example, camera assistant, one of the random items, zero days. Uh, but if I go ahead and select a start date, let's say I'm going to start here on, um, I don't know, the 3rd of October, and I'm going to end on the, let's say, 5th of October. That's three days, of course. I could put in a time here, 8 o'clock to, uh, let's say, 6 p.m., and we'll hit save. So what that's going to do now, of course, is calculate uh, three days of time, and imagine that uh, tumbling down to the rest of the items. In fact, I could do that. I'm going to go ahead and set that up uh, October 3rd. I'm going to set the start date for that. Are you sure? And we'll see here that it's flashing yellow to indicate that those are invalid times. So I'm going to set up the end date to be the same as it was before, Friday the 5th. And I'm going to hit the end date button here, and that's going to apply that end date to those items. So now we've essentially just said that this is a three-day project starting on Wednesday, ending on Friday. All of the time is calculating. Uh, if I wanted to override any of these, I could. Uh, so let's say for the camera, uh, even though we're starting in, on Wednesday ending and, and ending on Friday, maybe we really only used it for two days. So I'm going to adjust that here. So now we've made that adjustment. Uh, and we'll see that uh, any values that I've overridden, whether it's this price or these days, uh, are 
uh, showing up in blue so that we can see that they've been altered from the time. Uh, so finally, the, let's look at the difference view. So if I go over to the charge difference, what we're going to see here uh, is the budgeted values. Um, we budgeted $320. Over on the actual column in white here, turned into 970. Uh, and that results in a difference this, um, in yellow. Uh, and so we can see there's a difference of $650 or 203.13%. So this is the charge difference. Uh, and just know that we can also look at, well, what's the expense difference? Uh, we thought that there was going to be uh, 320 in expenses. Turns out there was 970 in expenses, and that means there's a difference of 650 or 203.13%. Uh, and then finally, maybe the most important thing is the profit loss. Uh, so we thought that there was going to be uh, a profit of $265. Turns out at the end, uh, there was 915 That, again, results in uh, 650 or 245.28%. Uh, um, so that's it. That's a couple different ways to build projects and a couple extra little tips there in the middle. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, uh, please check out studiosuite.com. Send us an email at info at or give us a ring at any of these phone numbers. Thanks for watching.